Hello, everybody, and welcome to Death's Curios. It's good to see you all here again for this penultimate episode of this series that I have absolutely loved so far. So we're going to go around, we're going to introduce everybody, um, and then let you know who they're playing and who they are. And then after that, we will get directly into a recap for the game after a message from responses, and then we'll be getting started with our second to last episode of this game. So uh, yeah, get ready for a ride. So we're going to start right off with Delilah. Welcome back. Hi, um, so I am playing Delilah today. Um, people are in my house as usual. Uh, someone's having a seizure. Good times, good times. Looking forward to the session. Good, good. And Magdalena? Uh, Magdalena is the someone having a seizure. I mean, ugh, gross. But um, I'm doing well. I am excited to be here, excited to play today. And uh, Magdalena is having a time. This is probably the first instance she's had of this, maybe. Hopefully. Definitely. Yeah, definitely. Cool. Great. Well, we'll see what she learns from this. Hopefully something, if anything, maybe. I don't know. Maybe we'll find something. Out. Maybe something you'll soon see. And we'll speaking see. of finding out, Miss Fetcher. Hello. I am Shakespeare. You can find me on Shakespeare, all of that. I'm playing... Miss Fairchild, who is a mourner and very worried about the two children who are currently hiding behind her, and the, all of the spooky stuff that seems to be happening, and the fact that she keeps confiding in people. It's not a, not a thing she does. Also, the food thing is alarming. <laughs> yes, the food thing is getting more and more alarming with it's each day. It's getting worse. It's getting worse. Let's see if it gets too bad before the end of these two sessions. So, Tilly Griffiths. Welcome back. Hello. Uh, I'm Humble Six. I'll be playing Tilly Griffiths, the ace detective, also known as the cat detective, which sometimes gets her in trouble when some mysterious serial killer also takes the name the blue cat murderer. That wasn't good. And is currently trying to figure out the mysterious uh, sort of identity of the person who broke into our home and is currently the blood of which has given our lovely Dampier a seizure, which is... Is that normal? I don't know. It is not. And speaking of not normal, Dr. Baruch. Hey, Greybeard, Greybeard's Tavern. And today I will be Dr. Baruch. And uh, he is missing an arm still. So hopefully when we come back to season two, uh, he might have some inventions to help him out. Mm, if only we'll have to see if we get one. But regardless of that, we'll hope. <laughs> As there's many more artifacts to go, but we'll see. And uh, right then, so speaking of, we're going to quickly throw you into a very quick trailer just to say a few things from uh, our sponsors today, and just to show you a couple of things that go on with the channel. And then after that, we'll get back with a recap and we'll get back into the game. So I'll be right back with you in just a moment. See you soon. Before we begin today's show, I would like to take some time to remind you about our sponsors. Fantasy Grounds, a virtual tabletop of choice. All of the beautiful maps and rolls you see tonight are done using Fantasy Grounds, which you can try for free at fantasygrounds.com. You can also get all of your miniatures from Wayland Games. Go to waylandgames.co.uk and get yourself a huge range of D&D, Warhammer and 40k minis for up to 20% off regular retail price. And Tabletop Loot, who sell incredible dice. Go and check them out at tabletoploot.com. Hello everybody, welcome back. So we're ready to get going. So last session on Death's Curious, quite a few things happened. Uh, Investigators, we'll call them for this session at least. It changes every session from detectives to investigators to just people. Uh, they were gathered at Delilah Berkeley's estate to discuss the plan on how they were going to get into and what they were going to do when they arrived at the auction that seemingly has a few of the items on sale that they're looking for. The underground auction was said to be very secretive, but Mickey, um, the American gangster who is currently just having a bit of a, uh, a bit of a couch surfing time um, over with Delilah's house, uh, managed to get them some tickets together. He said to go and see a certain gentleman, they'll hook you up with some tickets. Just say that I sent you. And so they did. They managed to make it to 
the warehouse after having a very strange trip where all of them began to see each other as very interesting creatures from rabbits to a raccoon to many other things it was a very strange time and they had a delightful breakfast in which magdalena revealed to everybody that she's dracula's daughter and maybe shouted about it a lot and a lot of things were revealed that day some secrets were shared over a very nice english breakfast still after they managed to get these tickets they managed to make their way back and finally something happened when they returned there was a crashing, and it seems that somebody had broken into the house, into Delilah's house, and Mickey let off a few gunshots before they saw that he was injured and came in to the two children, luckily unharmed, Mickey bleeding out, and this mysterious individual breaking their way out of a window and seemingly had no face to them. It's at that time that our detectives managed to find some blood on one of the window panes, which Magdalena quickly licked up to use her ability to see certain things about a person from the taste of their blood alone. Unfortunately, this didn't go as planned, and we come back as Magdalena is still sitting on the floor having a seizure after she's tasted this blood. The cold air is running into the house. The um, environmental locks on the outside of the window are broken, and some of the light smog is beginning to pour into the household. Um, and you do see Magdalena on the floor indeed having a fit right now. What do you do? I'm actually just running out to grab two respirators, one for, uh, you know, my child and one for Havelock. I trust the doctor. Casey, you run out and go and try and find some respirators in your house. Could you please give me a very quick, uh, just a coordination check, please? Okay. Seventeen? Good enough. You begin to sprint through your house, even with your dresses and the rest getting in the way. You sprint through and you manage to find a couple of respirators in Teddy's room and begin to bring them back for the two children. Um, and you will make it there very soon. What about the rest of you? What are you doing as your immediate reaction? Of course, Magdalena, you're having a seizure. You unfortunately can't act at the moment. Um, so Mickey, the rest was, Mickey was stable, last I remember. He was stable. And so yes. I will indeed turn my attention to Magdalena. And, you know, not that I know damn fear uh, physiology, but I will uh, attempt Time to, to learn, I guess. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> begin, begin to do what I believe is medical for her non vampire half. <laughs> sure. Can you give me a, uh, a parapsychology, please? No. There we go. Let's see what you get. Too many open windows. <laughs> oh. <laughs> you think you know what to do? I. You heard I'm... that uh, in stories that garlic is very damaging to vampires, but for half vampires, the human side thrives on it. Mm, mm, mm. Maybe I should just roll again. <laughs> Um, no, okay. Do you want to use a second uh, chance? <laughs> uh, uh, I will. I will use the second. Uh, All right, my go. So you sink one of your rerolls already. Why aren't you bringing yes. down the hives? Yes, exactly. <laughs> All rerolls and second chances up to your corruption level, which you currently have That's an additional fun. one, so there you go. Better. That's much better. So your, your initial thought, you go to kind of go and grab some garlic, then you remember that that's probably a bad idea. You don't know if that's true. Um, and you begin to have a think about Dampier physiology. Whilst you don't know much about it, she looks human enough. You can probably figure the rest out as you go. Um, you think you have a grasp of it. You know that blood usually heals her, but this time it's made her go into this state, seemingly. Whatever was on there has somehow affected her strangely. You're probably best off dealing with the symptoms of the seizure itself as you would with a normal human, and then trying to rouse her from her sleep um, in some way or another from whatever is going on with her. Right. It's a try tough call. To try to keep her from, from hurting herself and prop her head, um, and then just kind of keep people away because you never know if she's going to push, uh, swipe you or bite you or 
something. So I'll, uh, I'll interpose myself between as best I can with one arm. Um. Okay. So you're kind of trying to, to interpose and, and hold back Magdalena, the damp here. Um, could you please give me a vital check versus Magdalena's own? Mm-hmm. Magdalena, can you roll me vital vi- check? A vitality check? I just stopped my vitality. I don't know if this is a good oh. thing or not. Oh, that level Oh, up. dear. <laughs> Let's see if that XP was well spent. Oh, my God. Oh, it was well spent, all right. <laughs> <laughs> so you try and hold Magdalena down, but doing this seems to, if anything, make it maybe a little bit worse as she suddenly whips out with a hand and strikes you in the chest. Magdalena, could you do me another vitality check, please, for your unarmed damage? <laughs> okay. That's fine. Um, it's just straight vitality for unarmed, right? It is, yes. It's just your vitality. Now, I do feel like I have to say, unfortunately, I do have brutality for unarmed, which means ah. armor is not doubled against my... I don't have well. armor anyway, so... So... Okie dokie. Double the amount of fail saves. Okay. So you're struck in the chest, and you are winded, and you feel quite Ooh. wounded, because you're knocked Ooh. back around ten foot from where you're struck. You collide into a small bookshelf, the book's raining down on you, and you see Magdalena continues to thrash around quite violently. She Stay suddenly stands. Her. Don't, don't touch her. And Magdalena. Yeah? You were in control of yourself as far as it goes for a player, but mm-hmm. you're feral. Oh no, that's not great. Okay, so I, I've come out of it, at least the seizing. So you come out of it, sort of, you're not seizing anymore, but your eyes uh-huh. are blurry and you're just seeing these circulatory systems and these vague forms. Oh, you're not boy. seeing people anymore, you're seeing food and your instincts are kicking in harder than ever as that non-human side of you begins to take force. And um, do I recall, do I know that these are my friends that are with me in this room or am no. I like, eh, I do not, okay. Who looks, what looks like the beefiest life form in this room? Who has good tasting? Do we have good tasting? Does. Thank God. All right then. So. <laughs> I have bad tasting, and I'm yeah. standing in front of the children. Yeah, the okay, children so aren't, aren't much more than a snack, okay anyways. With... No, eh. exactly. So you're blocking yeah. the way, and you are very much bad tasting. You don't want to go near that one. They seem horrid, but the others Ugh. look okay. There's a big American lying still on the bed. Yeah. There is also a big, Amer- big American there, and there's a lot of blood there as well. Okay. Oh yeah, he is bleeding, isn't he? He is. In that case, it's probably like a shark to water. Um, you know, catch the scent of blood, go for that. All right, okay. Hey, Mickey, you so fine. So you were right so back in the room, numb. Lila, with the two, um, with the two respirators, just in time to see Miss Fairchild stood in front of the two children, keeping them safe. You see Dr. Baruch sort of against the bookshelf, books raining down over him. And you see Magdalena looking a bit out of herself as she suddenly turns in a very jerky fashion towards the very bleary-eyed Nikki on the floor. Yeah, she's standing in a very, like, nails extended, teeth are out. Uh, Okay. It's terrifying, mildly. Yeah, I imagine. Um, and the lightning right. crashes in the background just to paint the image even more. <laughs> I mean, the question is, is she unconscious? Like, are her eyes rolled back or does she look lucid? Give me a very quick wit check. Cool. Wit. It definitely got the, the, the hunter kind of gleam, the red with the reflective sheen to it, though. Seven. I'm good at this. You can't tell. This image is too terrifying. Okay. This is well, I know that she has spotted food. Uh, that food is Mickey, seemingly, and you can tell that she is going to go for that. You can tell that Magdalena I... isn't in her right mind. Yeah. If that is the case, um, I'm going to quickly pass the two respirators to Miss Fairchild. I trust her with the kids. She gives her a nod and quickly like rushes to kind of stand between Magdalena and Mickey, and just kind of like. 
hold out a trembling hand. Please, Mag- Magdalene, this is not like you. Um, are you sleep attacking? Is is that a thing, Doctor? It's, uh, I do not know. She was seizing, and now this uh, monstrous uh, uh, visage. Okay, um, well, uh, apparently bears like music. Uh, um, she she thinks about it, and, and, and then she'll uh, try and, like, <clears throat> um, how, how about a, a lullaby, Miss Magdalena? Something to calm your... <laughs> Miss Magdalena. Yes, <laughs> her instinct. In front of you stands a very delicious-looking human that seems to be comparing you to a bear. <laughs> I mean, they're not wrong. <laughs> I'm very strong, lustrous hair. Yes, very, very <laughs> imposing, powerful. <laughs> Ruler of all the forest. Yeah, I mean, not a bad analogy. Um, so give me a performance check, please, Delana, as you try and bring your little <laughs> Is Is there anything about Magdalena's demeanor that reminds me of Animus? The, that kind of mindless... Um, sort of, except Animus, usually they will seek out the closest form of life and will try and swarm it entirely. They... Hmm mindlessly go for these things so in that way yes but in the way of which she stood in the way of which she looks she looks much more cunning than an animate she looks to have a lot more intelligence behind her eyes okay i'm quickly putting the respirators on the children and taking up my exculpus again exculpi exculpus i don't know what the plural is exculpus is fine <laughs> Whichever you prefer, you're the mourner, you get to decide. And just kind of like, being like, uh, Miss Berkeley, I think you should retreat. But not getting any closer, because children. And on a 12, could you make a full power check, please, Magdalena? A a willpower check? Yes. I'm guessing no no concentration. concentration. As you are not in a way of concentrating right now. No. Mm -hmm. Holy shit. Uh, dang it, I can't just re-roll my thing. Great. Uh, <laughs> you can spend a second okay. chance if you wanted to. You have second chances remaining. I just don't know why I'd I'm like rolling to that fire die, now, and I'm gonna roll please. shit later when I'm gonna need it. <laughs> that's, that's what I'm thinking, like, you're really effective at killing us, so at least you know I... Oh, please don't <laughs> kill me. <laughs> 18! Oh, okay. you do it by I, one, good job! So you, uh, you Please don't to, kill me! Is that the name of the song? Yeah. Song. Um, <laughs> you sing a song that Magdalena has heard before. And Magdalena, that hunger yes. is still there, that need is still there, that feeling of everything being wrong comes over you. But you snap out of your haze as you see Delilah in front of you, singing, looking terrified. The rest of them, not looking that much better. The doctor, surrounded by books. And yourself, looking and feeling very much like you were upping yourself for the kill. Uh Uh-huh. Do I still feel that urge? You do. But you have control of it. She's going to... uh, clear her throat and I think can I just take a few steps back towards the windowsill and just probably to keep her hands busy just sink her her, her nails into the, the um, sill and just yeah. say yeah, excuse me for a moment that was bad blood never not what was that and as you try and think about what that was You have a think, and your mind was, and the things that overwhelmed you are still there. And Mm -hmm. when you think deeper on them, they're still there. Just trying to breathe in the fresh air from the window, because I'm fine. As you take in the fresh air, you start to have the information rush through your head. You saw tens, no hundreds, of faceless figures dressed in similar uniforms. Each one of them tasted the same. Each one of them turned towards you. They saw you. They know you. And you felt one with them. 
who felt like you belonged. You don't now, but you did then. And whilst you were in your unconscious state, you were almost taken by them. Oh shit. But you escaped. And you have no idea of the details, there's too many and also none that are too specific. It's an information overload. But something tried to control you. Something tried to change you. She's gonna kind of, you're gonna see her just taking some deep breaths and closing her eyes and then her eyes kind of pop open and she's, whatever it was that was in here is very dangerous. And there are many of them. Mm. Many That's the first of time. Them. Um, mm-hmm. okay. I'll tell Does the mask have the ability to do that? Them. I... Not that I remember. Then I look at the, the detective. Uh, sorry, uh, you were saying, detective. Uh, yeah, for the first time since uh, Magdalena like began uh, speaking, she finally sort of takes her hand out of the um, little uh, case she was holding, slowly puts that back. Many of them. How many? It is difficult to say. It just... And... I I don't know if there was something concealing them, but they seemed... almost faceless. Very many of them. They they, They were trying to... control me. They, they know I saw them. They saw me back. Is, is this... Which curious would that... Oh dear. We are looking for a dagger? And wasn't the dagger supposed to... win over people? What you don't... Mean? You won't suppose it was a dagger... And the mask, do you? That faceless description, that was something that the mask was supposed to do? Was it not? Uh, uh, regardless, um, she kind of looks over the children behind us for a child. Uh, my darlings, do, do you mind if we if we escort you to a different room? The I believe we should all move to it. Yes. Yeah, and she's just kind of side-eyeing the blood on Mickey, like, as soon as she got her description out, and is like, Uh, yes, are you planning on firing any servants soon? Uh, <laughs> no. She's gonna sweep okay. the children out the door into the hallway, like, nope. Yeah, yeah I no, kind of look like around. Immediately. <laughs> yeah, I look around. Do you, does anyone have the abilities to help me lift him? I'm not very versed in lifting unconscious men. I could. I am very used to that. I do it frequently. Weekly. Uh, oh! Yes. Yes. <laughs> I kind of flinch back from Magdalena <laughs> when she goes to pick Mickey up. <laughs> but then after we, we bring him to a def- different room, I will call for my servants and be like, yes, mm-hmm. this room it has been broken into, first of all. You know, the window. clean it up and someone close this and seal this mm-hmm. off. No, they immediately get to seal in the window. They get a couple of sheets that are specifically made to do these things to patch up the hole. They essentially clip it to the wall so it will stop mm-hmm. the inflow of air and the outflow of air. But it means that no more smog will come in until they can get a proper repair done for the window. But mm-hmm. right, that may take a while. Until then, however, you let I out. definitely. I take, I, I, I get a little Mickey's blood on, you know, my finger and ask, after I put him away, showing a lot of restraint, and then I'll taste it. Yeah, and as you taste it, you get a rush of things again. Um, you get fear from him. Mm. You get mm. adrenaline Favorite. from him. And okay. you feel a protectiveness. 
Mm. Ew. And you also yeah. taste something that almost sends you back into that same place. Ah, interesting. Okay. For just a moment, at like, least. Yeah, like, he might want to get a doctor looked at very good, because he has been a bit tainted, I think. I'm going to go for a walk, because you're not getting rid of any servants soon. And she will very, very quickly just head outside. <laughs> and you do, sir. So. You head out. <laughs> All of you have a little bit more time until you're meant to be heading out towards the auction. What do you do with that time? If uh, if if Ma Magdalena did say something about Mickey's blood, then I will get some samples of it to study later. Mm-hmm. Okay. She would have. So you okay. do so. You take some samples from Mickey, and you see to it that he's surviving at the very least. Oh, and. You guys did notice when the doctor went to stand up, he had a reinforced stake that he had drawn, and he like sticks it. Would in I his, have in noticed the that? <laughs> Probably. <laughs> yeah, out of everybody. Stand up. You use it like a cane, like to get up off the floor, and then tucks it back into into this his. This is late. This is very dangerous. It's very. Uh, Why do you uh, even have that? It's. And did you see the stake, Magdalena? Your memories seem to remember a very that exact state and stake, in fact, a reinforced stake with metal on it being on your table, perfectly placed a threat. And it's definitely that stake. Hmm. So I didn't have it? <laughs> or did I get it back? You did have it. You brought it up. Okay. You had your stake. Okay. There's nothing different for you. Oh, okay. <laughs> she she just narrows her eyes at it. Hmm. <laughs> Yes, it is good I take walk now, and just, <laughs> just quickly leaves. And you leave out the door. Okay, so that's your time, and Magdalena, you take some time to get some fresh air before the auction is to uh, take place. Yeah, and if she is sees something, she someone walking a little... Given, given the district you're in, you would occasionally uh -huh. see people who are usually accompanied. Nobody is out alone as you're kind of watching on the streets. Everybody around this district is far too important to walk uh, away. Uh, so she's just very frustrated. <laughs> um, you see her in the gardens, like, just grunting at people. Mm -hmm. <laughs> just looking at, like, <laughs> like a cat watching a fishbowl. Just... <laughs> Going, I could take them both. I could. They couldn't do anything about it. But that publicity, I just, I'm supposed to, not one's supposed to know. <sighs> just big hissy fit in the garden. Indeed. And Tilly, what are you up to in preparation for the auction? Um, how much time do we have? A couple hours at most. Um, she's gonna take about ten minutes to try and look at the window pane again and see if she can get any fingerprints off of it to see if they've touched anything. Um, if that doesn't... Certainly, you can do that before the servants put up the sheet and get rid of the rest of the window yeah. pane. So, so she'll pop uh, on the respirator. Certainly, and you're trying to lift some fingerprints. So if you can give me a forensic science check, please. Yeah, that's fine. That's a 16. Very nice. You managed to lift a few prints. Just two, but you managed to get them. You managed to get an index finger and a thumbprint. Index. On a right hand. And thumb on the right hand. Okay. I, I tell, I inform um, Delilah about it. Um, Miss Delilah, if I, we were to get the uh, cooperation of the uh, Metropolitan Police or the Scotland Yard, you'll need to file a formal report about the break in. That way, when I submit the evidence and she, like, uh, gestures to the um, fingerprints, they'll be able to perhaps run it through some sort of database. It'll take a while. It has to be manually done, but it might give us a lead on who did this. I'm afraid I'm not fond of the idea of speaking with either organization. Did I explain why Mickey is staying with me? thought it best to um, allow you some privacy. Yes. 
Thank you, and I am grateful. He's been paying them off to keep them away yes. from me. Yes, you have. Um, you alluded to that in your diaries. Yes. My husband. They think I killed him. Well, they would. Yes. Which makes the position of of um, investigating Mr. Car um, Mickey a bit of a precarious one. Yes. She I don't really know if you want him gone. Not yet. We can speak about this later. But for now, I cannot have him in trouble, nor can I invite police into my own home, or have anything to do with them. You can still refuse access, being the property owner, you can refuse access. Yes, but having my name in their minds is not something I would like, especially not with the dwindling influence of the American well, gang. Uh, then I will try and investigate this um, without the use of your name. Thank you, Tilly. You're very kind. <laughs> Thank you. Right, I have to be going. Uh, I've got a Miss uh, a Miss Chelsea Barrows to see about potentially getting some payment before this uh, auction. So, be safe. Luckily, they're next door neighbours, so you can go to the next door manor, and that's where the child is from. So, <laughs> I shall send them for warning. You know how it is. Yes, thank it's you. It's polite to do so. And um, I'm sure if anything happens, just sing loud enough and I will hear. <laughs> I would hope so. I've had quite practice. And on that note, you send your servants to send notice to the next door's estate um, that they're having a visitor to the Griffiths. And what are you doing, Miss Fairchild, before the auction? Miss Fairchild would take the two children down to the kitchens and kind of settle them with a servant and fill her pockets full of food. Yeah. There's um, multiple there. Yeah. And then would actually go and see Miss Griffiths to inquire as to the address of the safe house and if there's anything needed to gain entry. Um, she would then write a couple of letters and probably give them to Larkin and basically say in the okay. event of anything happening to me send these one of which would be to uh to the father of um havelock's mother detailing that you know that something dreadful had happened to him something dreadful had happened to me they were no more leave us alone etc um and the other because she is very short of allies who aren't involved in this business would probably be to robbie carr to uh, oh. say that if something happened to her, there was a small child that needed looking after, and she trusted him to make sure that he lived a good crime adjacent, if not involved with life. Yeah. <laughs> um, and then would probably well. go back to Miss Griffiths before she left, because none of us should be alone. So Larkin Going takes anywhere. both and uh, kind of looks at you and goes, <laughs> you're all right, I'll, I'll make sure these get to the right place then, Miss. Um, got a dow look, I hope you're all right. But if anything I happens, am... I will deliver these, I swear, my own life. I would appreciate it, Larkin. I am not without hope, but I am a realist. Uh, I would appreciate if you delivered the letter to Mr. Carr first. The letter to Lord Herbert can wait. If Very anything well. dire should happen. I'll keep it in mind, but I hope that nothing does. But just in case, I'll make sure to keep these close to hand, he says, and just pop them in his pocket for now. Thank you. Uh, at some point, when uh, after we have departed uh, this evening, if you could deliver uh, young Master Havelock to an address, I will give you before we leave. I certainly can, yes. Um, I'll bring a couple of the other lads along to make sure that there's no trouble on the streets, of course. It's dangerous streets out there. Thank you. And uh, uh, do not be afraid of leaving him uh, alone at the location. He is quite capable of taking care of himself for short periods, young as he is. Very well. You know, Thank you. Okay. Good luck. 
and I will down. go and find the others, see what's happening. But yeah, and you uh, catch when Kelly Mr. as she's on her way out after the servant has returned to basically say, we delivered the letter, they sailed off see you. Uh, Miss Griffiths, uh, you're not going out alone, I hope. Only next door, although you are more than welcome to accompany me. I, I, I think it would be prudent, given the uh, dangers we find ourselves in. Thank you. N not, not that you are incapable of looking after yourself, Miss. Of course not. I appreciate you thinking so. Right. Well, shall we? Uh, after you. Okay, so you begin to make your way out and towards the um, the house. So you manage to make it there and you were let in immediately. Um, and they do say, oh, the Lord is ready to see you whenever you wish. Um, he's set up tea and things in the parlor for you. Uh, please just uh, go there. You'll see Miss Barrows there as well. Uh, we do have an extra guest. Is that all right? That's completely fine. Thank you. And, uh, and they let you in post haste, and you're led into a still very extravagant, though lesser so than the Berkeley estate. It's it's much more traditional, um, and a lot quieter. There's a lot less servants in this place, but you're led into a sort of very fancy-looking study room um, where there is a table set with tea and with biscuits and with some scones, and you see at the opposite side of the desk is the young lord. And he nods and smiles at you, and his loyal maid, Miss Barrows, is by the side and kind of gives you both a smile and a nod very politely. Seemingly very happy to have the Lord return to where he should be. Yep, and uh, Tilly will step in, she'll do a very slight curtsy. Lord Marriott, uh, you look very well. Are you covering okay? I'm recovering quite fine, yes. What do I owe the visit to? Um, though, of course, you're welcome any time. You saved me. I would want to impose too often. Uh, I would like to have a di small discussion with uh, Miss Barrows um, on one particular uh, mode of business. However, she came to me privately when you were missing and we arranged a sort of flexible deal on payment. Right. I do not wish to be rude, but I'm, I am here to collect. No, um, what would you need? Uh, I believe I would need money. And that's easily done, yes. How no, much would I you need, Miss want... Griffiths? She kind of... Hmm. For the task that I have, and it is... I assure you, this is not for my own necessarily personal gain. I'm on another case. Of course. There is a payment to be made of around 200 pounds. Now, I understand that that is a very steep figure, and personally, I would never ask for such a thing. However, any 500. Mm -hmm. She like, takes a step back. She steps into Miss uh, Fairchild. Very <laughs> She's sorry. standing, like, right behind her. Uh. If that's not enough, I can... 700. No, no, it is more than enough. More than enough. I... Are you sure? Yes. I only need 200. Well, starting. Very well. How's this? I will take 500 and I will give what I can back when I can. I don't... That's a lot of money, Lord Marriott. Uh, Lord Marriott. He just kind of looks, the young lord looks over at you, the fire sort of crackling away in the side of the room, and he looks over and says, well, you should at least drink and eat. But, um, Miss Barris, he says, and kind of looks at his maid, who goes, yes, my lord, could you please go and get, and he kind of whispers how much and gives her a key. And she goes away, and he picks up his tea and starts drinking. I must thank you for the recovery of me. If not for you, I'd be dead. As for paying me back, with all due respect, Miss Griffith, I do not believe you make enough money to be able to pay me back. You're very right. But and I... I have plenty of money. What I don't have is somebody who is a friend. 
I'm willing to give you this if you'll visit, perhaps, sometimes. Uh, what and tell cool. me of your cases. I'll have to spin some details, but I'm more than happy to talk to you about my cases. You know, I think for 500, you can not spin the details and tell the truth, Miss Griffith. I'll tell you about my old cases. And the new. <laughs> you drive a hard bargain, Lord Barry. It's not a bargain. It's very costly. And she gives him a smile and uh, leads Miss Fairchild to go and sit. Miss um, mm, Fairchild does not. She's trying to stay away from the food because she ate. She ate, but oh my goodness, she yeah, you see, eat. you see the young lord kind of sip his tea and look up at you and go, "You should really eat and drink." Ah oh, yes, this is uh, Miss Fairchild. She is a, uh, a close acquaintance of mine. Yes, a mourner. I am here to ensure Miss Griffith's uh, safety. Oh, I'm no danger, but very well. Um, and I will just stand behind, like Tilly, when she sits down, just keeping her between me and the food. Well, unfortunately, that uh, little event, and she'll uh, just sort of gesture to the bruise. I'm feeling rather fragile, and I have a tendency to um, lose consciousness. Very well. Miss um, is uh, here to catch me, hopefully, if I fall. You know, and he kind of takes up, he puts a scone on and um, puts some jam on it. And uh, he sort of gets a cup of tea and he will lift it and take it over to you, Miss Fairchild. Mm. And offers it out to you. Please take it before my servants come back. This is very improper. <sighs> She'll take it and put it down on the table. Because, oh, she's trying. She's really trying. On your corruption. <laughs> Yep, yep. A delicious That's scone. That's why I ate it in the kitchen. <laughs> no, yeah, no, she's going to stuff it in her face. It's not dignified. Yeah. It's very gross. But she <laughs> she takes a seat back. a cup of tea because, yeah, sweet thing is a thing. Mm -hmm. mm. And uh, you, you devour that scone. and he kind of raises an eyebrow. And it's about that time that his servant comes back with a small box and uh, comes back and holds it out to you, Tilly. And, there. Uh, she'll take that it. should cover anything you need, Miss Tilly. Just remember our deal. You can come and talk to me perhaps once a week. Once a week it is. Unless, of course, you're on cases, in which case I understand. But I expect better stories the next time you visit. And, uh, she sort of tilts her head at him and, um, can I give a quick, like, check to see how he's really feeling, whether he's, like, disturbed Certainly. by my you can problem? give me a quick psychology check. Okay, I don't have psychology, so I'm just going to so go. Just give me, yeah, just a straight 2d20 then, so 2d10s even. Um, yeah. Just you well. determine that he is, he is a heir to a very wealthy family and is young. He has been, you know, sort of raised in a way that means he has to show no weakness. Um, it does seem, however, that he's very lonely and it does seem that he is shaken from what he went through. Um, and indeed, money doesn't seem to be too much of a concern to him. Um, he would rather have company and to hear stories. And she does take a, take a sort of, she leans forward ever slightly and places the tea down. One thing I'd like to just clear with you, um, Lord Marriott. Yes, you, Miss Griffiths. You witnessed something quite horrific and you saw me perform something that was likely very traumatic. No. No? No, it's fine. If you're sure. I'm not so easily shaken, Miss Griffiths. Then you're braver than I am. And she gives him a smile. Yeah, he smiles back slightly. Now please, he says and hands over the box. And be careful not to lose it all, and don't go anywhere near Lower London with it. Make sure you put it in a bank or somewhere safe. Rest assured, I will. I keep that in mind. Now, you should probably get on your way. I will. I'm sure you have much to do with that money. Good luck. I'll need it. Thank you very much. And I will see you within a week. I'll see you then. And, uh, they'll get up. Miss Barrows, if I can just borrow you for a moment. Yes, oh, yes, of course, she says and goes with you. 
the young maid walking over to the side with you. What can I do for mm-hmm. you? Thank you so much. It, honestly, it's um, it was an honor, and I, justice was hopefully served for all those families and yourself. How was the trip? It went well enough. Very well enough. Mm -hmm. Not fully well, of course. No. But rest assured they're safe and they are in good physical health. (sighs) All right. Nothing was off when you were there. Aside from the obvious. All right. I really do appreciate what you did for me. She shakes her head. It is no bother to me. Now, I'm sure you're busy. We can talk of this later. You go yes. and do whatever detecting you need to do. It never stops. And uh, she sure gives, a little, gives a little curtsy and uh, goes on her way. And you do with your box of unknown amount of pounds as you leave. And you go back to the other house. Meanwhile, Magdalena, you've been looking to try and find targets for ages but they're always in twos or threes or fours and there's death watch everywhere. Ugh. I bet one of those would be tasty, but they are just... I don't want to lose another ear. It's already been a bad day. Ugh. So she's just... She'll just... And she's been stalking around. She's not been... Like, yes, look at me. She's yeah. been like full on staying in the shadows. And then... And definitely with 100% without her respirator because she okay. was too distracted to remember to bring that with her to fake it. Um, and it's as just so there's nobody you see Miss Tilly and Miss Fairchild re-arrive at the gates. Mm-hmm. Go past the bush in which you're stalking. Yeah, she'll just come out behind them and be like, did this go well? It did. Thank you for asking. Good. Why were you in the shrubbery? <laughs> it was comfortable. And it's on that there note. A body in it. <laughs> no, there is no body anywhere in Upper London. Everyone is just traveling around in pairs, like good little citizens that don't want to get eaten. Shocking. And I did not feel like doing much effort after having a seizure, so... <sighs> I just stopped around at the gardens a bit. And it's on that note In the that we go to each of you and see yes. what it is. So you've got your money, you have stalked, but unfortunately not been able to feed. <laughs> you have managed to, of course, pass over your letters. Dr. Baruch, you've taken samples, you've made sure that Mickey's fine, you've made sure, uh, no doubt, that the other, you know, the servants haven't got anything, any issues with the smog that's came in. Um, you've done your business. Is there anything else that you or Delilah need to do before you go? I would have allowed Dr. Baruch to work in my husband's public lab. He's public, as in the one that she is allowed to go into because his other mm-hmm. lab that has more of his more like secretive stuff he keeps closed but there's still a working area for him to work in that's suitable for you know a man of science um, and it's a beautiful lab it's very clean very brilliant it has all the stuff you'd need aside from a voice oh. doctor i will unmute i will unmute uh I guess, uh, yeah, I would uh, use the lab and check the blood and see if there's anything strange or... Sure, could you give me a very quick... Just a medicine check, please. All right. Very nice. You check the blood and most of it seems fine. Uh, Mickey's blood seems to be normal, human, average. It's only as you put it under heat that you see something else change. Um, As you put a lamp over it and check closer and the light and the heat hit it, you do see a small, what looks like a worm-like creature begin to wriggle around and fizzle. Hmm. And fizzle, hmm. Hmm. And I'll, you know, pull out a notebook and pencils, because that's what he uses. And uh, 
begin to draw said worm as best I can and uh, scribble okay. some notes, like time it, how long it took to fizzle under the light and, and such. It took around 10 seconds. Okay. I'm in the same room as Mickey. <laughs> worm boy. <laughs> I want to play like a weird Victorian superhero game. It is I, worm boy. <laughs> I wriggle, and if you cut me in half, I wriggle some more. Oh. <laughs> no. Wimboy, Wimboy's what I call my dog when he stretches out. <laughs> oh, God. Oh, no, don't. And on that grim note. <laughs> you were in the room with Mickey. What are you, he's awake at the time, and he's kind of looking around a bit bleary. I've been, like, kind of, like, you know, applying like a cooler damp rag to his head in case of fever and the like like that. Just basically taking care of him. Oh. Uh... Oh, it's, uh... it's good to see you. It's good to see and you. And welcome, too, Raiders. <laughs> well, welcome, Raiders. Um. You all right? Just looks... You seem a bit I'm... uh shaken, Delilah. You nearly died. Yeah, I do that time to time, you know me. I just kinda you know. Ain't an easy life, is it being what I am. Yes, but that wasn't for business, Mickey. No, it ain't. Because there was a psychopath in the room with a knife going for your kids. That's why I did that. I also thought, you know, a gun. You, sh you usually point it at a guy, you squeeze and they die. Or maybe they don't and you shoot a few more times, to be sure. But they didn't. And you got a wave. It's weird. Never seen somebody dodge a bullet like that before. And I had, I had a pen on them. I ate straight shot. I swear. Yes, I know your aim. She kind of tries her best to black out images in her head. Yeah, uh, she continues to kind of just dab his like face very lightly, yeah. and kind of fussing about a bit. He had no Thank face, you. though. Yes. We that ain't right. Think, we think it's related to Curios. Well, if it's a thing that takes people's faces, then that's pretty dangerous. Probably go for a good price, but, uh... I ain't interested in something like that. If it's that, it's used against me. Yes. We're worried that whoever that person was, there's many others out there. All right. You didn't get... Any blood in you, right? Any blood? I've got plenty of blood in me. No, their blood. Full blood in America. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I, I beg to differ. There was a hint of something. I should like I should swear <laughs> lads. Mm. Ooh, yeah, some I'm Italian. <laughs> <laughs> Welsh. Um, no. Uh. <laughs> You know, she she shakes her head. No, I meant the, whatever that <laughs> creature, that being was there. No, I don't got any blood in me from that thing. No, it stabbed me, all right. It, it stuck me real good, but, uh, well, you can see that, can't you? So, uh, well, that's where that's going. But, uh, no, it ain't done no weird blood swapping with me, no. All right. Nothing like that. I'm I'm glad. She she nods and kind of uh gives his hand a little squeeze. I I didn't expect you to protect my child. Look, I have certain things I ain't good about people hurting. Despite threats that need to be made sometimes, I ain't never hurt no kid. And I don't appreciate someone doing it. Uh, Grown-ups, they're fine. They make their own decisions. 
But anyway, well, if you're heading out, you're gonna need some protection. Nine. You know I can't. Got like ten holes in me. She nods. You know I can't hold a gun. Well, have you got someone who can? She kind of thinks about it. Well, he's like, uh, the he says, and he kind of shifts aside part of the mattress and pulls out his Tommy gun. And he's like, because I got a gun. <laughs> uh, perhaps the doctor? She kind of thinks about it. Uh, he, but he is now one armed. Um, Mr. the Griffith. Oh, just make it cooler. He can hold it in one arm and he can be like, you know, shoot everywhere. That Maybe a bit old off aim because you need to brace it, but I trust the doctor's arms. I'm sure he's strong. He carries the weight. I just look of horrified. <laughs> <laughs> yes, perhaps that would be an idea. You don't mind that he's taking what? samples of your blood, right? I heard something. Magdalena was said something was off. Why was he doing her. with it? Whatever. You're doing science things because that's fine. That's just advance in medicine. And so uh, you know, maybe he's yes. never, maybe he's never. Well, he has done operations on Americans before, but you know, maybe he's wanting some higher quality blood. Is there, is there a difference in blood? Yeah, like well, American, we're better in every way, you know. She kind of well, like, raises. <laughs> And say he's very much on a lot of a lot of painkillers right now. <laughs> yeah, she, she just she kind of indulges them. Mm, <clears throat> yes, mm-hmm, kind of. Sure, yes, yeah. dear, whatever you say, dear. Yeah, exactly, exactly. So, uh, there's that. Okay, but no, yeah. like crazy, yeah. no crazy worm thing attacking her at all. No, just no, no crazy players. worm thing attacking her, and the doctor will be done by this point. Doctor, do, do you go to check on your patient? Yeah. Uh, you walk in and um, you see Mickey with like a Tommy gun in one arm. <laughs> Talking about how Americans are the evolution. Yeah, very um, interesting. Uh, you are, Doctor, uh, I got a, got, a, got a present for you. Mm. Do I have a present for you? Other than my blood, which is already a present. You took it though without asking us to steal it. You're a kind but of I'm a present because I'm a doctor. So, uh... and maybe we should uh, just put this down. <laughs> you know, I was going to do it. He says, kind of pointing at you. And... <laughs> okay, <laughs> leaning it aside, try to try to take it with one hand. <laughs> it's pretty heavy, but it's an interesting looking gun. Hmm. Uh, yeah, what is it? Kill a lot of people. It is uh, uh, it's automatic, I assume. Yep. Yeah, it is. You just point it, squeeze, and then. A lot of mist. I I just look. I just look green. <laughs> and, uh, the oh. doc will put it. The one arm. He'll like put it on a table and click the safety on it, <laughs> just to make sure the safety is on. And then there is no safety it. on this gun. There is no safety on this gun. Okay. All right. He rolls with only one mode on this guy. <laughs> it's come on. Safety has been removed. Uh, okay. All right. He'll be yeah. very careful with said weapon. Uh, but yes, he will take the Tommy gun with him for now. Okay, good. If you nothing else, to keep yet. it away from the guy with drugs. Um, now you be good with liberty, okay? Need a back. <laughs> <laughs> it's just, uh, Does he good. have another I've... one called Justice, though? Because Liberty's That's just him. this rock gun. <laughs> That's uh, his fist, anyway. <laughs> That's his, uh, very, very good, very good. Thank you very yeah. much. <laughs> oh, whatever you can, not keep it coming. Hmm. I switch out. <laughs> I, I shake my head from behind. I'm like, <laughs> makes me want to, like, I don't know, like, cuddle puppies and things. You know, it's good. <laughs> Feel happy. It is yeah, uh, very, very bright. Good. I too. It's shiny. Um, I am yeah. asleep now. You have a good time at the auction. You keep Delilah safe, okay? I will you keep Liberty best. safe too. Nice shot. Bring her back to you. You, you do this. You, and you get that mask back. Not for me. Not for Delilah, but for America. 
I said <gasps> America. Yes, indeed. And, and it, I salute. Looks <laughs> and looks very patriotic. And then just passes straight out. <laughs> the whole time I'm like putting him in bed and pulling the covers up. And, and he passes out. <laughs> I like tuck him in a little bit. And... <laughs> oh, so... You took me in bed, and you're... That's that scene done. <laughs> so yeah, I'm sure we prepared. just probably end just like the doctor and Delilah just look at you, they're like, ah. <laughs> and as you do, no eagles fly by, because it's England, but a pigeon does, and it kind of thumps into the window, <laughs> and then slides down it and we'll leave you there as we cut to all of you prepared to go to the auction you have all your things together you've got all your preparations made you have your tickets you have your cart ready to take you to the location where you'll be entering the tunnels and of course you have your box of money do you count the money before you go i will you find a hundred pounds inside mm. okay the rest of you walk in to tilly progressively adding more notes <laughs> to a pile and looking progressively more wide-eyed okay. as the pile is getting it's signed. Gone. I still I, don't understand this paper generous. money. What, what <gasps> nomination is this again? Oh, good lord. <clears throat> that man is... I just kind of look at it and like, oh, that's fine. <sighs> oh, gosh. That man right, is richer than Chris, so... Oh, good god. Yes. <clears throat> um, I suggest we split this up between us. We don't all want to be... Well, one person carrying it all is just a recipe for disaster, so... Yes, this is why checkbooks are so much more important. She kind of, like, taps her little checkbook. Give oh, it is that money? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. No. Right. Why don't we have one of the servants carry it in a case? It'd be more convenient. No, 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 no. 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 Why not? I just look so confused. Mm. Because as good I... as any servant is, that is a lot of money, and money is temptation. Good God, that is a lot of I money. I just do not tell them it is money. Tell them it is, like, something disgusting. Also, like, Mr. Delilah, are you brains. really expecting your servants to come with us to this auction? We only have My to just... have brought them oh. everywhere. She kind of looks a bit confused. Um, Do you have tickets uh, for them? Mm. Oh, yes, you're right. I completely forgot about that. Ah, Paris right. thought. So, no, it will need to be split between us. We all have a job to do. I trust you all not to run away oh, with I, it. I do feel terribly skittish when I carry your money. I feel like I'll be robbed. Where could someone run on this tiny island? Miss Fairchild is just having a, oh God, rich people moment. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, she well, just looks at my daughter. Well, once my husband's back, you'll find out. If you're not comfortable mm. with holding any money, Miss Berkeley, that's fine. Uh, the rest of us will take two hundred pounds each. God, Makes it a nice not. bit. Oh. I still don't understand why we you want me to not give you. No, that it's perfectly fine. I've just, it, it's, I'm fine. <clears throat> well, any that she is not very spent, confused. Any that is not spent on the um, on the items in question, I'm more than happy to divide it up among us. Anyway, so we all contributed to finding those children. That is uh, very there. generous of you. Thank you. Spirit of cooperation, yes. Doctor. Again, so what the I nomination is this? They're pounds, Miss Deville. Yes, yes, it is weights, but how much? Not pa <sighs> It is about one penny for a piece of a, a, a bread, right? Oh, okay. A penny. Okay. So right, this is a loaf of bread. This one is. <laughs> you can tell Magdalene is not really like. It's a lot question. of money, Miss Deville. She's just, she's just throwing. Yes, usually I just grab a handful and throw them at whoever I am buying things from, and they say, "Yes, that is good. I have a great day." So a I pound figure. is like buying out a bakery for a day. Oh, the whole bakery. That's it? Yes. It's a lot. Oh! oh. All that of the pastries in the bakery why they are so happy to see me every that. time I stop by. That would explain yeah. it. You've yes. probably been very generous in your payments. Miss Fairchild is just going to look at, like, Dr. Varuk, just trying to yeah. find any kind of semblance of... Anyone here been hungry? Ever? No? 
<laughs> the I'm a princess. <laughs> the, I the, from from what I can believe is dollars. Sorry, she's just I'm having a class crisis. This is like, like my twelfth currency dollars. change. Yes. So it is. It is. It. Is, it only want so to learn it so many times. And you speak on currency for a short while longer. <laughs> if you pack your things, you get on your carriage. <laughs> and eventually you do begin to make it. After splitting the money between yourselves, add 200 pounds to each of your sheets over the new Delilah. And you all begin to make your way towards the auction. It's very late at night. The streets are dead. And you find yourself being led into a very secluded area. The entrance to where the auction is meant to be is very vague, but you know that there's supposedly an entrance near here. And it's as you depart and the carriage leaves you all there that you suddenly hear a whistling coming from down one of the alleys. Is it a song? Yes, it's a song. Is, is it a recognizable song? It's is it whistling, like... God Save the Queen. Ah, oh, very patriotic. <laughs> Robbie? <laughs> yeah. yeah, no, she just kind of listens like, oh, how very, how very nice. Uh, I've never known people to be so loudly patriotic in England. And as you do, somebody pokes their head out from around the corner of the alley and looks over at all of you. And they seem to be wearing a very fancy hat. It's purple and it has seemingly um, a gold trim to the edge of it. And he looks out towards you and kind of smiles a bit. He has quite long hair, a bit scraggly. He kind of goes, Ryan, so you're here for the auction, I'm imagining? Yes. Only you're dressed up for the occasion. You all look like you're lost, which is usually what we have when we have these beautiful auctions that we have. So have you got your invitations? Yes, we, we do. Good, he says and walks out and he's twirling his uh, sort of cane around his finger as he does. And he stands there and waits and holds out his hand. Well, if you would then, perhaps. Have I ever seen this person before? No. <laughs> Have I ever seen this person before? You <laughs> might have given me a very quick intelligence check or a streetwise check if you have streetwise. Ooh, I do have streetwise. Second question, does he look like he's carrying weapons on him? He doesn't look like it. Okay. Uh, I had to have Delilah's uh, servant help me with a couple things before I left to Certainly. accommodate my loss of arm. Yeah, that's all good. They'll have helped you out. And on your 20, you know this person. <laughs> They're known on the streets quite quite uh quite famously as fancy vince mm. <laughs> love it i will just like step up and put the invitation in his hand hello vincent well i do say yeah my mother is the only one who calls me vincent but i guess miss fairchild you have a motherly air about yourself so you're more than welcome to call me that if you wish, though it makes my old heart ache in pain and sadness at the loss of my dear Ma. Thank you for your tickets to that. He says and takes it and kind of just folds it up and then just pockets it. Rusty, you got them as well? I'm assuming as much. You all look like Yes, who do you go ticket boy? <laughs> right, yeah, I'm not going to know ticket boy, but all right. He says and takes the it. The doctor hands his. Thank you. Thank He's better than name. You. And his house? One. Of course. Thank you. Thank you, cat detective. Don't welcome. go losing any cats down there. You won't find them. They go missing. No, they'd probably be on sale, wouldn't they? Probably would. Depends on what kind of cats they are. Fat ones Good usually day. sell better. They do, they do. He says and kind of smiles at you a bit. Speaking of, surprised to see you all here. I mean, I know that, of course, that one's rich. It's in Berkeley over there, murdered her own husband and all that stuff. Bet she's rolling in it. But don't know about all the rest of you. 
With all due respect, I come from all the sir, money. I don't, I don't think any of us appreciate your speculation. We just like to get into the event, please. Oh, that's fine. That's fine. You don't need to appreciate it. It happens anyway. That's the way it is. But yes, the event, you say, is in kind of gestures. Follow me then, loves. And he starts walking down the alley. I'll stay, but I'll stay next to Miss Berkeley. Yeah, I'm just shocked that someone finally said that. She's like, ah! <laughs> he said Miss what? Fairchild almost looks fond. Almost. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, he gives you a bit of a smile as he walks on down. And he you see now that you see him fully as well, he's wearing a matching purple suit. Um, and he has like <laughs> a very blue tie. And he's got a, uh, a green shirt on as well. It's very unmatching, but it's all very fancy clothing. It just looks very mismatched. And uh, he walks over to what looks to be a, um, a bin at the end of an alley. And he lifts it away quite easily with a hand. He sort of whips it out and slides it very dramatically. And he goes, and there is your entrance to the depths to lantern. Welcome all of you to your new place. Make sure that when you go inside, you keep yourselves dressed very well and make sure that you're very respectful to the people inside. And of course, make sure to buy plenty of stuff. Now then, enter its fee. Just the quid. Sure, you could spare it if you got so much money on you after all. I just back to it always for someone else to pull that denomination of currency out first. <laughs> I just pulled five pounds out, just like, boop, boop, it's five pounds, what are you talking about? <laughs> what? Thank you. He says and takes it and goes, I'll take back my words about you, Mr. Lala. You might not have killed your husband, but you have killed this man's heart. Thank you. So kind. You may enter. Our domain. Uh, mm. as as we enter, are there people immediately there, or is it like a downstairs? No, it's basically of... just you're going into a sewer. <laughs> okay. All right. Yeah. Okay. Uh, at least that's how it looks. You're climbing into <laughs> darkness, and he does kind of take out a little lantern. He kind of. Oh, I can oh, see. Yeah. I just. Down. And he's, he oh. climbs them down and holds it up so that you all have a view of how to get down. For a brief moment, I like kind of pull away my respirator, get something really pretty and scented, and then put it in a little like pocket for like extra sense of it. <laughs> like, it's all gross. right. That stuff doesn't flow down here if that's what you're worried about. Just centuries old dead. That's kind. I'm glad for my citrus scent. Okay, so do you all follow? Do you yes, follow and I keep an eye out for vampires because you said centuries old dead, and she's like someone my age here. Jamie she looks doesn't like near his vents, but uh, you managed to make your way down. <laughs> and he kind of looks over at you all, and he shuts the grate after you, and then climbs back down and goes, "Right then, let's follow me." It's not a very far walk here, but if you do take the wrong turns, you can get left, lost forever down here. It's pretty bad stuff, actually, you know, these sort of places. It's, if that's old London, this is old, old London. This is like mm -hmm. the bit below. I'm sure you know Miss Fairchild. Um, he says I'm aware. Ball. And as he does, you can see there are skulls on the wall. Hundreds of them lining the place underground. Hmm. Miss Virgil just Lena takes will. off her sunglasses because <laughs> they're underground. Mm -hmm. So Spookamai yeah. is casting an eerie glow. Magdalena will take a nail and mark usual. which way they're going so she can find her way back if she needs to. And you do. You begin to irk, irk, irk on your way there. And Miss Fairchild, you see a lot of the energy around those skulls begin to get very annoyed. <laughs> I hate these places. But aside from that, the harm reminds right. me of home. Oh! But you About do see that. some wisps beginning to follow Magdalena. Do I, do I see Magdalena scratching those things or not? You do. Okay, they good. It's pretty obvious. It makes a very nasty noise. Okay, I put, Just... I put the China, China pencil I had out back in, in my pack and <laughs> for the same purpose. Okay, and as you do, 
Miss Fairchild, as you're walking through and as all of you are walking through, and as Magdalena is scratching them, you see that strange energy around Delilah again, and it seems to almost be sort of stroking at the skulls in the area and the bones that she sees, this energy almost pulling at them and yanking out the spirits to be more active. And you do yeah. see every single skull that Magdalena scratches, and with a little wisp begins to follow her. Uh, Mr. Ville, I suggest yes. you cease what you're doing. They don't like it. I realize how ridiculous that sounds. <clears throat> it would not and, be the first um, time I do something someone does not like. Yeah. Oh, mm. is that right? Yes, but um, normally it's the living that you offend. Mm. In my experience. Mm. Mm. Why, well, someone offending the dead down here? It's not good to do that. There's a lot of them for miles. Mm. No, I like will will cease, but she she looks irritated. <laughs> Just trust me, all right. I'll lead you in and I'll lead you out. I am your guide for this evening, so I'll see to it that you're all treated well. You see, as you keep on going. When I was younger, you see, as he starts walking you through multiple tunnels, he takes so many twists and turns, and everything looks very similar, and it's hard to determine how exactly they know the way. But he continues. A when I was younger, you see, a couple of lads used to come down here, used to get a bit of a game, you know, I'm sure you know it, Miss Fairchild, you're a poor one like me. We used to come down here, we used to have a bit of a game. We'd say, we'll lock you in, you got ten minutes, you got to find another great and get out. We stopped after about three of the lads went missing in a row, started to really be a damper on the game. But I've heard that those people are still down here even today, or even that they got possessed and came back out. So be careful with these, because these skulls ain't good business. They're bad business. They're angry, dead from God knows where or when. Been here since the fan of the city. These tunnels about the same. Probably Roman, honestly, if we were to Probably. guess the name. Can, does Magdalena recognize any of the, like, Ooh. architecture down here? You do nope. not. Okay. So it doesn't look obviously like, you know, maybe Roman in construction or something. No, okay. it doesn't look Roman. Um, or Byzantine. Yeah. Heard of the, you know, none of that either. You've heard of catacombs in France, but mm -hmm. this is different. This yeah. isn't meant to be here. You've never heard of this. Oh, no. Based on the route that he's taking us um, mm. and having like a sense of direction and having Magdalena occasionally scratch. Is he actually leading us around in kind of circles to throw us off? Can you, can I you can sense very, yeah, you can do a wit check. You can have an additional plus two for your uh, photographic memory to help you along a bit. Hit. 18. Okay. He seems to be. Um, he's led you around a few circles. Um, he seems to be leading you around a bit of a circuitous route. Um, seems to be taking his time, sort of getting you a bit lost before he takes you to no doubt the place where the auction's to be. It doesn't seem sinister, it just seems to be protocol. It seems to be what they do to make sure that people don't just walk in here and try and steal all the stuff there. It's sort of holding, you know, they need a guide to get in and out. Okay, based on that then she'll try calculating a, a quicker route based on the path. Like making sure, a, a map in her mind. Give me another quick intellect check please. Okay. I believe it. Yeah. Thanks. Hmm. Still a plus two or not? Still a plus two, yes. Okay. This is incredibly difficult. I will re-roll that then. As <laughs> you say that, I'll use my first re-roll. Sure, certainly Please use the second chance. It's only just better. Mm. You're struggling. You don't understand this place. It's hard to grasp. All right. Still, as you Fine. walk through, eventually keeping you around and you see him put two fingers in a skull's eye and then turn the skull and then pull as a door opens. And inside, you hear music play. You're a strange thing to be in this sort of a place. You hear jazz music playing, the strange American music that you've experienced uh, a few times before. Uh, oh, so Lord. relaxing. <laughs> Somebody's and murdering you see a tune. A gaggle of people, though, all of them wearing what seems to be masquerade masks of some sort, all of them covering their faces in some way. I believe we're underdressed, Vincent. I believe you are, but you're in luck because I'm the best guard in the city and you did give me a fiver, so 
he says, and he kind of goes into a bag and he pulls out a few masks for you. Now, I don't have many types of ones. I have like two bunnies, two cats, and I think a weasel. I want to be a weasel. I'm tired yeah. of being a weasel. You're a weasel. Others. <laughs> I'll <laughs> take a cat. It's preferable to the old Magdalene, I'll take a cat. Yeah. That means you two are the rabbits. I guess we are matching, Doctor. She oh. kind of looks at the, the bunny. Now then, whilst you're down here, you make sure. Not too good. Good enough. The auction will start very soon. You get yourself situated. Make sure you're ready to go and make sure that you're ready to bid. And please do not bid more than you have. Tonight is the night to buy things you need. If you don't have the cash on you, sorry, loves, but you can't have it. Simple as. Aside from that, make sure you'll be good with the rest of them and don't reveal your names and identities if you can. Here's your numbers. He says and gives you a unique identifying number each. When bid and it's over, they'll know who you are. And if not, say it's with my group. I'll know who you are. Is there an auction list? Or a way to see things not before they are? Not a list. Are? It's all about official. And the fun of this thing is the mystery. You gotta see what happens. You gotta watch what happens. You gotta see what wondrous things they bring out. And then that way, you don't know if you're splurging out all your money on something useless when there's something better around the corner. It's the beauty of mystery, ain't it? Miss. Badger, I think. I forgot what animal you are. Weasel. Wait, that's the one. Same difference, isn't it? They're, neither of them exist anyway. They're dead for years. <laughs> are they really dead for years? Yes. <laughs> most uh, wildlife. Come on, badgers would have been like the first thing to go. Most, yeah, most wildlife in the UK, given the plague and given the rest that's happened to it and the corrupted land, is dead. <laughs> like, there's yeah, a reason that like, chickens and eggs were so weird a thing for to see with Magdalena and Cooper. Mm -hmm. Livestock so, is not very good. Even like in the U, like even back home, like where they had no more. in the US, you were fine. Because I'm quite the sure they, they're stored in environments for a reason. <laughs> she just looks confused. Like what? <laughs> you mean the fun? <laughs> And I understand what you're doing, and I get it. It's mysterious, it's scary, but I tr trust you. Trust me. Trust in me. I will see you through tonight, and you'll have a wonderful evening. So, speaking of, if you need anything, I'll be in the corner getting drunk. Also, have a good time, he says, and starts walking off. And you do see there's a collection, check, right? very exclusive club around here. They're all in masks. They all look to be very wealthily dressed in different manners and seem to be from all over London and other places, no doubt. And many of them are sort of stood around in the auction. No, there is a Barclay, they don't take check. <sighs> Goodness. It's kind of like when you go to a, like a grocery store that says they don't take tap. I can assure you nobody takes contactless in this time and age. <laughs> no. Yeah, she kind of like looks a bit overwhelmed and kind of leans into whoever's closest like, oh, I feel rather faint. Oh, it is okay. And he pats her on the shoulder. Perhaps we should find some good seats so we can see everything. That would there is indeed idea. Sections of seats all around the auction area. They seem to have um, made what seems to be almost like an auditorium sort of area. There are rows of seats that go around at different angles in this underground catacombs. And there is a stage there as well that seems to be very well presented with curtains that are currently obscuring the stage. And you do see most people are walking around the floor, but some people have taken their seats and are mulling drinks up there and drinking very expensive looking drinks. Um. Out of curiosity, just add like more of like a side note than really. Mm. What type of people are here? Um, being a socialite, I've like talked to mostly Certainly. all the people who are worthy of being known in Upper London. Can, you give me a check, please? Uh -huh. Can yeah, like... I check as well? Because I've worked for quite a lot of. Certainly. Did you say etiquette, etiquette. or what? Pardon? Etiquette. Yes. <laughs> Perfect. Yes. Let's see. Let's see. Let's see. Mm -hmm. Magdalene is just keeping her eyes, uh, eyes, her, all her senses, eyes, nose, Ooh. ears uh, peeled for anyone not completely human, either Dampier or a vampire or non humans. You 17. do detect a few non humans in the crowd. Hmm. 
Ooh, how do they register to my spook am I? Very powerful undead in the area. And in your spook am I, you see many spookums around from all the schools around the area, but you also do see a couple of people who have an air about them. Is it the same air as Magdalena has? <laughs> For a few of them, yes. Okay, okay. Don't like that. <laughs> <laughs> And one of I'll just clock the very powerful undead. Okay. They okay. seem to be a sort of taller gentleman who's got their shoulders very rounded and they're wearing a very beautiful black suit with a very long coattails on it and a bright red shirt. And they've got black slicked back hair and uh, what seems to be a wolf mask on. Mm. Hmm. And could you please give me a very quick history check, please? Me? Yes, you. Okie dokie, I can do that. Yeah, I'm gonna re-roll that. <laughs> <Okay>. <laughs> I knew it! All my good rolls were earlier this day. Let's see. That's better, 11. You recognize this mask and this person almost immediately. Uh, you recognize the mask as one that your father used to wear at masquerades. Daddy? <laughs> Oh my god! Daddy? Oh my god. Huh? Papa? Papa, can you hear me? Sorry. <laughs> yeah, she she immediately clocks that and probably even double takes slightly because it's been so long um, since she's seen a reminder like that, especially in the flesh and blood. And I'm just kind of float in that direction. And eventually you do, man, you, you all see Magdalena sort of like look over and then immediately start to like awkwardly make their way over towards that direction. Looking, trying to look as subtle as they can, but like moving almost like a giddy, like a bit of a giddy little girl almost with how they're moving. Miss Magdalena, are you? Kah! Hello! Yes. We're not supposed yes. to use real names here. Yes, he Miss Cat. <laughs> Go with Catherine, or Katharina. Go oh, Katharina, that works. Sure, Ka You Ka shouldn't Ka forget Ka that. Yeah. <laughs> it, you were wandering hmm? off, Miss Katrina? Was I? And her yes. eyes are not like on you at all. They are completely glued. <laughs> yeah, and it's as you look back, you don't see them. And then Delilah, you feel a hand on your shoulder. And a tall person behind you. Oh. As you hear a um, voice that goes, uh, You are not the usual type to be here, are you? Do not worry. You seem lost, but we will see you through this eve. I, uh, I quickly, I kind of stiffen up, but then I kind of turn and I, I'll curtsy politely. Uh, good evening. Uh, and then I look at the person. Is this, is this Mr. Wolf Mask guy? There is a person with like a very old looking sort of half wolf mask, which has like a big sort of fancy edge to it. That he has this big red, like this big suit on as well, and looks very imposing. Is the papa's voice? It is the papa's voice. <laughs> uh, assuming I can tell that this is, you know, Spookum mm. Radar, I'm just going to reach it's off the It's off the chart. I'm just going to grab Lady Barclay's arm and just pull her behind me. As soon as, I curtsy, I'm about, like, mm -mm. as soon as I curtsy, I look up and I'm about to say anything. I'm just like, oh, um, pardon me, excuse me. Oh, uh, hello. Someone with the eyes is spoken. <laughs> spoken. She does not laugh. I know of your kind. Do not be afraid. I am not here to hurt. I am here to buy. Miss Fairchild just looks at him and says nothing. So long as she's between Miss Berkeley and him, that's fine. <laughs> and it's as you're getting closer and closer and closer, Magdalena, <laughs> that he, he looks down at you and just goes, Yes, what can I do for you? She has almost a moment where she's like, like, you don't recognize me? She's wearing a mask. Your, 
<laughs> he puts a hand on his shoulder and says, It is good to see you, Magdalena. I do not forgive you for disappearing for 100 years and for making sure not to get me house and for not sending messages or doing any of my bidding that I sent you here to do and making sure to completely fail in all of your missions to me. I'm so happy to see you, Papa. You are a disappointment. Come here. He says and gives you a hug. <laughs> It clicks I now, my <laughs> ah, He says, and kind of, he looks down at you and goes, if you were any other of my daughters, I would behead you, but I, not you, you brilliant man, brilliant man. I am sure you have been doing much of the slaying of my enemies, and the drinking of the bloods, and the taking I over the city. I have been doing city. much, yes. Um, I wish to meet the queen tomorrow, you can set this up. Oh, Good God. For a sec. <laughs> What did he say? I'm sorry, I cut out said for a sec. I wish to meet the queen tomorrow. You can set this up. Oh. Ah. Yes. Maybe I'm sure it I shall look fine. forward to it. Tomorrow uh -huh. I shall find you. Okay, Papa. It's wonderful to see you. I was not expecting you. to see you here. It's, I brought so many lives. How is this sword? He's very expensive and very old sword. I'm sure I know, you it's very, very old sword. Yes, Papa. Good, good, good. You are not all disappointment. <laughs> this is good. Oh. I am proud of you for keeping such sacred things safe. It's been in generations of family since I put off paid the peasants and then did more of that. And then I passed to you and you do the same. It has cut off many heads. Many. Good. How many? Uncountable. It's, it's truly so many. So many. Tilly is so out of here. No, thank you. <laughs> I'm eavesdropping. Like, I'm, I'm just going to drag Lady Bark, Lady behind Mr. Fish. Like, <laughs> this no, girl, trying to eavesdrop. Oh, but it was getting good. It, I cut up head, you know? not but a couple days ago. Good, good, good. Show <laughs> me <laughs> later. He says, and kind of just, he can I have business to attend to. I'm sure you of understand, course, Luke. Yes, of course, Papa. Now then, my most precious of children, he says, and kind of pinches your cheek, and goes, you go be good, or don't, and then phases off to the side into the crowd. Uh -huh. And she basically just kind of melts into a puddle of just... <laughs> happiness and slight like oh. <laughs> but she's 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 all misty eyed as soon as like she's done i'll kind of look at miss fertile like is it safe now yes go, go speak to yes just go <laughs> uh, thanks Ma i mean i mean miss fairchild and she just like runs and go <laughs> miss fairchild's soul just leaves her body in that moment like I'm Forty-two. I'm not ancient. <laughs> I go and okay. find Magdalena. She's a puddle. She's there. Huh. I'll just be like, so what's this I hear about an audience with the queen? I'm sure I can figure out someone. I'll just murder the guards, we'll drag them in. It'll be fine. Well, I was going to say oh, one of my friends' the cousins... queen, probably about taking over a country. <sighs> Oh, well, you know, my, as I said, my friend's cousin's could just be um, social husband visit, though. He is just... related. Oh, yes. really? That, yes. that is a very good, less destructive option than maybe. Yes, I do know people, you know. Um, I had to do a lot of social networking as Ned's wife. Mm, I have tried to avoid the networking of the social because people... And on that note, yes. what are the other three doing? I, I, find I, was, a good uh, I was just finding it. Studying that I would, whole interaction. <laughs> I would was, probably uh, just follow Tilly and sit down. <laughs> yeah, the two find the seat. Um, you manage to find a good seat. Uh, you take a seat, and you can see the entire floor from here. You can see people mingling, people talking, people chattering, and you can see Magdalena the Puddle, and you can see Delilah, and of course Varut studying them. 
think I hate that it's like that anymore. Mm -hmm. I say quiet. What are you talking? Speak. I'm sorry. Um, we're away from that. you. Oh, okay, okay. I'm sorry, <laughs> I, didn't, I didn't hear that. Could you repeat yourself? It's alright. I just said I, I don't think I I uh, get along with events like these. I'd be rather worried if you did, Miss Griffiths. <laughs> Yes. I don't think most people are comfortable in these situations. And it's as you say that and you say Miss Griffiths, uh, there is another individual on you, just behind your room who hears this. Um, and they sort of seem to twig onto that and then just kind of look over and then their foot taps a bit, but they just kind of sit back. And they're wearing a fox mask. A red fox mask. And a Can tweed I, suit. Do I, do I recognize tweed. Um, Not from just look, because they've disguised themselves. Okay. Can I help you? I turn around. No, no, it's fine. Everything's fine, I'm sure. Do I recognize that voice? <laughs> yes, you recognize it immediately. You literally met them yesterday. It is Detective Arthur Murray. Oh, <clears> good <throat> lord. Hmm. Interesting. I see it's not only me who's on a case here. It's good to see more people have actually got a good idea of checking out this thing. It's so hard to find a ticket to this. Yes. I had to squeeze a lot of people. Perhaps we can discuss the peculiars outside of the event. There is no outside of this event. This is the room. There's this and there's the back rooms where they keep I didn't know you were so literal, sir. Um, I meant when we're not in the event. Well, I assure you, Miss Weasel, mm -hmm. I'm very, very literal. Right, well you do fantastic as a Mr. Fox. Thank you, we only operate on facts. Facts and knowledge. And I just turned slightly to Miss Fairchild, is this what I sound like to you? And Miss Fairchild, you can tell she's trying to find a polite way of saying yes. <laughs> not entirely. No, no, it's all right. I have some reevaluation. Just smirking. <laughs> <laughs> With my great detective abilities, I can tell she's lying. I'm not lying. It's just um, I'm not lying. It's just um, sweetening the truth. Mm. Being polite never hurt anyone. And so I rarely do friends. it. I sounds like I'm gentlemen. still a try. They were very polite. Mm. They oh, opened Ms. the door Cat. to death for all of their victims. Oh, good lord. <laughs> Miss Bell's just stalking. checking out of the conversation a bit. <laughs> Before I solve their murder. <laughs> Yeah, I'm, I'm trying to like bring back Magdalena to the fold. It's like, oh, so we've made friends, yes? <sighs> what ho, how are you? Oh. Says the fox. Mm. Uh, <laughs> I'm the most wonderful I have been in years, decades. Oh, really? brilliant. We're all yes. wonderful. We're all sitting around here, aren't we, Pip Pop? Mm. <laughs> and Miss Fairchild will turn. Sorry, go on. Looking at him and then looking back at like Tilly and Miss Fairchild. What's Miss Fairchild doing? <laughs> Miss Fairchild will turn to to Miss Griffiths at this startling display of upper class accent and just go, "Is that what I sound like to you?" Um, <laughs> depends on the situation. Mm. And the truth grows sweeter. I'll work on that then. Yes, I think we both have things to work on. Yes, 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 of course. We're all British here. God save the Queen. Uh, oh, yeah, are. Oh, very very American accent. <laughs> <laughs> Bother, I'm going to find somewhere else to sit. <laughs> no, no, it's fine. Stay there. We're in a good position here. We have a view of everything. And with my detective abilities and your eyes. What all I'm going to hear is you nattering all night. I can't concentrate. I know, be quiet. quiet. I'm not going. Honestly. Does that mean you're going to shut up? Please. Please. And for the love of Christ, stop talking about your cases in the middle of a... Well, there's no one around. It's fine. They're out of earshot. 
um, no. probably things here that can hear you. They're very yeah. much not out of earshot. Um, they anyone seem to going be, to introduce us? Birth. Uh, Lord Harrington the seventh. Lord have, have you ever met a Lord Harrington the seventh? You no, know, it's a fake name. <laughs> okay, so like very obviously a fake name, yes. It's yes, just like Catherine. <laughs> yes, yeah. He kind of like looks at him and just narrows her eyes, and then just looks at Tilly. Is he your friend? You, you don't seem very friendly. Oh, oh dear. Don't mind that. No. That's my detective cat. <laughs> Shush. <laughs> uh, <clears throat> Lady Katerina, you met him. Yes. Very mm -hmm. recently. Ah. Uh, and I kind of just give a sniff in his direction. You smell the Irish detective. Mm. Oh, yes. You I ask many Arthur questions. Ma yes, of course I do. It's my job. Uh, yes. As a lord uh, of England. Uh, yeah, as it were. Now I see why you like to pretend all the time. And she looks over at Tilly. Whoa. Is this English thing? If it helps, no. I made a brilliant disguise. No. Go. It fooled everyone. <laughs> oh, Tilly just holds her head in hands. <laughs> the, the, doc, the doctor has got a syringe and he's looking at some like sodium <laughs> pentothal and he's thinking, you know. <laughs> just one stab in the leg and this guy will be out and then he puts it back and closes his bag I'm just well, trying um, to not go at this point <laughs> just well, whoever you, are, um, you don't sound Speaking particularly of. noble <laughs> it's about that time that Tilly's head hits the front seat luckily it's very plush D uh, I, I will you warned her, her to sleep and, and hesitate <laughs> before kind of awkwardly uncomfortably leaning her against my shoulder so that she's not going to flop everywhere. I will just kind of... <clears throat> and I'll dig through the bag to get some smelling salts. <laughs> it might Let's be impossible to tell in low light, but Miss Fairchild is blushing. <laughs> try to, try, try like, to smelling like salts and that. see if we can't bring her back around. And you don't need to, as a gavel hits a uh, what seems to be a very nice bit of wood and lets out a crack, crack across the entire room until you spark awake. Good lord. Oh, sorry, Miss Fetcher. Sorry, Miss. Uh, cat is fine. Cat, yes. Uh, are, are, you, are you quite all right, Miss Weasel? I was quite happily unconscious for a moment there. And it's about that time that the voice cuts over, as you see a rather rotund-looking gentleman with a very short grey beard, a bald head, and spectacles on step out from behind the curtain, and he looks around. Ladies and gentlemen, welcome, welcome to tonight's event. I welcome you all to an auction, one that will be very profitable for me, he says, and there's some laughs from the audience, but also could be good for you. Today, we have items on show for your eyes only. This exclusive club of people here today, gathered from the richest, the privileged, and of course, the craftier among you who have made much fortune in this city. The items today are one of a kind. There is no others in the world, this means. Of course, the price will start at a decent rate, but I am sure when you see what is here, you will be bidding in no time. Without further ado, we'll begin with our first item, he says. And you see a, what looks to be a case rolled out. And they roll it out in front of the desk, and they unclip it and lift casing and inside you see a very strange looking firearm it seems but there's coils on it and there's strange me metal on the device and you see rods attached to it that seem strange this gun you can kill your enemies or your friends or whoever you wish to with very simple way no one can trace weapon they die of burning they die of lightning this shoots electricity 
you can induce heart attack you can just kill somebody less subtly if you wish as if they were struck by lightning bolt that is up to you the starting bid is 50 pounds yeah and i will I say one of its kind designed with some of the schematics of a dr nikolai tesla himself Oof. sadly yeah. departed and i wonder why I lean it to Dr. Verout. Do you think mm. that's the weapon that killed our guys? Mm. It, it could be. Should we f uh, bid on it? 60 pounds, comes a voice. Yeah. Good. 60, 60, any lower than this, 70 pounds. And the bid keeps on climbing until it hits 120. No. Do any of you bid? I'm not interested in guns. I have things. And soon after, they kind of go sold to the mouse in the back. He says, and he kind of wheels it off to the side. And the gentleman comes forward and hands them over a number. They take it and they trade another one with them. You see the gentleman walk back, and they seem to sit down quite proudly and happy. I'm gonna try and just take a note of what they look like. <laughs> The sky. The doctor but... takes. Oh, sorry. Takes the money that he has and gives it to Tilly. I could not be trusted. <laughs> and just hands you the money because he can't be trusted. The science is too much. It's, he he and nearly it's... bit all two hundred on it. So it's he... it's likely that's not the weapon anyway. The the heart that I gave to you for tissue, uh, for mm. sampling, it was atrophied. It was accelerated, degenerated. It wasn't entirely just a heart attack. I cannot. The, the science. Something could come, could come up. I am too tempted. You keep saying. Oh, um, it's next okay. stop. We give you a very tentative pat. It's an invention. Very, very interesting. I give you a package deal. And please, ladies and gentlemen, do calm your hearts for the shock that is about to come to all of you. And they wheel out what looks to be a large tube-like thing with a big curtain over it. And they grip it and whip it off. And as they do, you see a very almost plasticky looking pale alabaster skinned person. It looks like a man, completely bald, no hair on them at all. Not even eyebrows, anything of that sort. And they seem to have slightly longer limbs than they should have. I give you life. And the container that made it. Inside is a solution, one developed by a very, very prestigious laboratory of the Lovell Society. Apparently a successful experiment. And some of our people made sure to make it get to a more profitable place. So, the life and the room that birthed it. <laughs> that food good call doctor <laughs> bidding at 10 pounds oh, oh. <laughs> 40 50 60 70 and the voice well, we're is all on this boring life tank or whatever um magdalene is going to scan to see if she can see where her dad is in the crowd you do mm -hmm. see him very obvious. He sat mm -hmm. on the front row and he sat sort of leaning be. to the side, a glass of wine in one hand as he sips it. Yeah. And doesn't it? Okay. Yeah. I'm eating pocket bacon, by the way. You're eating your pocket bacon. <laughs> it's got some hairs on it, but it's decent. Yeah, she doesn't care. And texture. Okay. Delilah so. actually just slides over some cookies she had like brought just for the occasion, by the way. And they're gone. Yeah. No. She's oh. sitting down. And that's good. Cool. It seems to climb Thank about you. 190. The, the whole time the doctor is like sweating. He's like, oh. I'm not giving you your money back, doctor. Most wise. Not until you've got what we need. All right. 190. He says, and then somebody comes over, and you see a 
person that seems to be wearing a very white suit and an owl mask walk up with a familiar stride to yourself, Dr. Varut. They've got a slight limp on the right side, and you recognize them as one of the many surgeons in the war. Hmm. Like, like a certain lull society surgeon? Maybe. Hmm. Um, I, I'm sitting next to Miss Tilly. Uh, I guess Miss Tilly, you 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 would hear uh from under my coat. <laughs> Doctor, uh, Bunny. Hmm. Are you all right? No, that is an evil man. A very evil man. I hate to inform you, Dr. Bunny, but there are probably many evil men, women, and creatures in this place. Hopsworth. Hopsworth's a good name. <laughs> Thank you, Mr. Fox. Uh, we ha uh, uh, yes, I'm just taking uh, precautions. She gives you a very gentle squeeze on the shoulder. It's all right. And he, he nods. Next up, they say, is another cart is rolled out with a big box on it. And they lead it out and they uncover it. And it looks to be what well, looks like a very plain black box. Nothing remarkable about it at all. And they look over to it. This item is very special. If you thought our first bidding was powerful, this, this changes everything. With this, you could level half a block of houses within one shot. Takes a while to recharge. Now, of course, this could come in very handy for things that are ethical, like clearing out animate or clearing out enemies. <laughs> we'll start the bids at 200 pounds. Four, he says, and he sort of lifts up the big top, and you see many different sort of uh, parts of the device that's deconstructed within it. Um, Van Heller's Death Ray. And the doctor can't help himself. He is nodding in acquiescence, like, oh, yeah, okay, cool. <laughs> yeah, this thing's scary. Hmm. And the bids rise quite quickly 200, 250, 300, 350, 400, 450, 500. The doctor is thinking to himself, why did I save that child? I, I the world is the world is evil. This is this, this whole building needs to be leveled. And <laughs> he's having like a, a a total dilemma of 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 conscious right now. I love how you're just wishing death upon humanity right now while we're doing this. It's it kills me. And at five hundred pounds if no one bids. The death ray goes to a mysterious lady in the audience. Huh. She's an American oh. voice too. Great. And she kind of goes over and she has very sort of tumbling red hair and she walks over and smiles and hands over uh, some cash to the gentleman, 500. And takes Question. her number. I know pretty much ev almost every American, of, like other than the smuggled ones, that came you here. Do. Who looks like that? Give me a very quick history check, please. <laughs> Eight. 
Or 14? 14? A 14. On a 14, you'd remember that anywhere. Uh, their name is Camille Livingston. They were one of the people who came over with the rest of the Americans that came over. Um, they were from another family of the, uh, the mafia that you knew. Um, but these ones were more powerful than Mickey's lot. Scarier than them. But they joined forces when they came down here. You know that Camille in particular doesn't take well to any losses. And hates the British adamantly. Oh. <laughs> Delilah just sinks very deeply down her chair looking like... <laughs> she looks terrified. <laughs> and she'll cling to the nearest person, probably Magdalene, like, Oh dear. I will never what? go down to Lower London ever again. I live there. What's wrong with Lower London? That's Camille. She, 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 she very much hates the British. Ah. And doesn't take well to loss. Oh goodness. Mm. So I should, <gasps> I should eat her then. You may try. <laughs> the doctor leans out. Yes, you should. <laughs> I I know, know, like nothing, nothing but kind of like little, little nod. Like. And you see her sit back down in between four very, very tough looking individuals. And she sits back and sort of leans back as one of them fans her. <laughs> Thank you, you really. Servant. She kind of looks at like, like, you know, Miss um, Tilly, the but then she still looks her. And the bids continue. Weapons. Narcotics, strange historical artifacts stolen from many museums, pilfered oh, from all across Do the I, world. Does my does my father bid on anything? Yes, you see a. Um, they seem to put on sale what seems to be a a very large wooden stake, <laughs> and uh, it's got a skeleton on it. Mm. Oh, very cool. And uh, they describe it as being a <laughs> one of the only remaining stakes from the rain flood the Impaler. <laughs> Said to be mm. one of the oldest and first of their victims. Pristine kept condition. Mm. I've always it. loved loved mementos like that. Oh, and they did. And they get it's it for that fifth time. Good, good. They also bid on other couple of things. Uh, you see, they bid on an old sword from uh, the Roman days. Uh, they bid on a set of armor from the Dark Ages. Um, and they also bid on what seems to be a mummified puppy. That's said to be Aww. heavily cursed. Oh. <laughs> it, this, is, <laughs> this is what happens. Papa goes and buys things for us on auctions. Sometimes they're cursed. Like that doll I had said that had murdered three people before we figured out how to. And as you say that, suddenly on the table comes a very familiar looking doll. As a doll, <laughs> with no it's got no eyes on it at all. And you see it's got a knife in its hand even now, just stationary. And it's placed on there. And it's in a box glass. Such fond memories of my early, early years. And you see, you see your father looks back at you, Magdalena, as uh, Vlad Dracul looks up at you and kind mm -hmm. of goes, Holds his head as if, what, do you want it? It's a pass. <laughs> <laughs> and you see um, people begin to bid on the doll. It goes for 30 pounds to a lady who is sat in what seems to be a wheelchair, um, who is sort of sat oh, very delicate. She's dead sat. within a week if she's wheelchair bound. <laughs> I learned how to run because I had doll. It was, oh. <laughs> <laughs> Miss Fairchild is just wishing she had a cane so she could just like smack people in the knees with it. I have a, uh, oh, I do have a question, Jam. Yes. You know how I'm like sensitive to things like this? Mm. Do you think like it's head turned immediately to me? Ah! And when and when the lady with the wheelchair turns away from it, it begins to scratch its knife down the surface towards you. <laughs> Oh, she likes you. Does uh, that happen often? 
Well, things have always happened to me that were strange, Miss Fairchild. That's f that's a first. And before our final item of tonight, we have very special item. And they wheel on a large object. It seems to be about the size of three men stood on top of each other, and very wide. And it's covered in a big sheet as they wheel it on. It's the mirror. This is said to be a very important piece of history. It was found in the house of Elizabeth Bathory. I'm sure you all know of them. And then you kind of hear a brr of like the same thing. They said that each night she would look into this and see herself much better than she was. They said some people believe that this helped in her madness. Witness, he says as he peels it off and you see a very large mirror that has a very nice gilding all the way around it and looks extravagantly beautiful. I will try and fix by it. The glass itself okay. still has some dried blood upon it. Ooh. Is there any way by like leaning forward or sitting up like slightly straighter, I can get myself between Lady Barclay and the mirror, just like, oh. you know, just tilt slightly? <laughs> Any particular feelings about this particular mirror, or...? So as you look at this mirror, could you please give me a very quick... Just a quick wit check, please. Save you can have the oh. Okay. Mm. Uh, wit, 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 wit. Okay, that's a plus two. That will be useful to me. Um, please don't die. Yeah. Oh, God. Snake eyes! <laughs> oh, my God, a crit one. Okay. Do you look at it a no. and you see yourself in the mirror reflected, the audience all reflected within its surface, and you love it. This is the most beautiful mirror you've ever set eyes on. And you think it can help you. It can help you get Ned back. Maybe you could use it to enter the mirror. Maybe it's big enough. She rummages through her pockets to see if she has any like spare like rings and. You and, do. Like, you have a couple of diamond rings in there that are worth a couple hundred each. Um, you have a necklace that Ned bought you as your engagement present. Uh, that's worth at least okay, four hundred. <laughs> yeah, but maybe not the engagement. Gifts, you have about twenty pounds to your name. Twenty pounds. Other than your engagement presents and the other sentimental items you have. Okay. She kind of like kind of claws it. She sounds like, oh no. And kind of looks around. I th maybe that would... <sighs> like looks at her her necklace she's wearing. No, no. That's, that, was, that was from Ned. <sighs> Miss Tilly, is there no way for us to get that? We haven't what we came for, Mr. Lila. <clears throat> I just came in my... Sorry, Miss... I'm sorry, um, Miss... Miss... Weasel? But just call me Miss Weasley. Weasley. Yes, of course, Miss Weasley. <clears throat> <clears throat> Give me a moment. The, I, me, the, me, the players having Harry Potter moments. Um, call me Molly. Okay, okay, okay. <laughs> <laughs> Oof, okay. She, she nods. I, I, I feel as if that would help me with with getting Ned back. One minute. And I, I range Miss Fairchild. Is that mirror good? Spook him, Charles, oh. off the rate. It's definitely something. And things I tend to, which kind of gestures to that side, don't mm. tend to be good, generally. It's certainly something, but it's not actually my area of expertise, much as... And she gestures again. Anyway, it's more, more your area than mine. One hundred. Mm, I would say if 
They said that there's the last item coming up and we have three we're looking for. So I would say if Lady Barclay desperately wishes to bid, put a cap at 200, <laughs> if she must. Miss Fairchild thinks this is a very, very bad idea, but you know, polite problem solving. Will anyone raise a hundred pounds? It's up to you, Miss Berkeley. Well, Miss Bunny, cat, I don't know. Oh, she's a bunny. I, yes, she kind of looks at you, ah, oh, she kind of thinks about it. You know, I've always liked the name Jessica, Jessica Rabbit. That would be nice. Yes. Oh, all right, yes. Jessica. Bearing in mind the rest of us have been very good throughout all this, and I am a nod to the dog. Yes, did you not see historical artifacts? Oh, Yes, they're so the, tempting. She kind of looks at the mirror continuously. Like, <sighs> then the, the doctor really? leans forward and says, you have more than that on your neck and your your hands. This is going. I cannot. A uh, hundred and ten? How much is it? A hundred and ten. Let me raise a hundred and ten. And I no just lean into Miss Griffiths again and just be like, stop her if she gets too much. <laughs> and they do not. Nobody else bids. Mm. And they smart you. Come and collect your number and pay, please. Tilly hands you £110. <laughs> I will pay you back after this. Don't worry. Mm. Checks actually and, work outside of this house. And you pay the price. And the large mirror is recovered and pushed into the back. We'll deliver it to you later. We'll ask your guide who you are. You know, the little, like, you know, rabbit nods, and uh, we'll uh, go back to be seated, looking quite relieved. And you sit back down with the rest. And it's at that point the final item is being brought out. This is very recent acquisition. We bring this back here from New Museum. See it as a... we got it given to us by a friend of ours. They give us this to sell today. It's a grand item. It is known as a very powerful artifact where I am from. The Mask of the Tortured Heart, they call it here. And they bring out a pedestal and they peel off a very nice looking fabric cover. And as they do, you see nothing. And they look where the mask should be. And they look confused. Oh what? no. Hmm. Somehow this does not surprise me. I say very And it's quiet. about that time. Child. That you yeah. hear a whirring coming from behind the stage. What? And you hear oh, a I hit the floor. As you see the <laughs> gentleman who is holding the auction, you see his entire torso melt away, a searing hole where it should be. And he looks down, his heart beating as it falls, and he <laughs> crashes to the ground. And it's about that time that chaos begins. And you see through the whirl of chaos of people running, standing up, beginning to try and break their way out, the rest of the people trying to keep the artifact safe, you see somebody step on stage for a moment in between the whir of blurring people near you. And you see they have a mask on. And I'd like one of you to roll me a d5, please. Not my bad luck. D5? Miss Fairchild, roll me a d5. I you had your hand up. Goes with it. So. I believe in you, Miss Fairchild. We're going from the top to the bottom. One being Delilah, five being Miss Fairchild. One. Who 
Here we go. Oh. Self-selection. Beautifully poetic, Miss Badger. The individual in the mask looks at you, only you. And you feel those eyes lock onto you, those pools of darkness beneath this strange bone mask that it's wearing. And you feel strange. Miss Fairchild, could you please give me a will check, please, with no concentration? And this will be very hard. Very good. You only gain one corruption. However, you get a deep feeling and need to give in to your hunger. And that hunger is worse than ever before. And there's so much food. And it's at that point as this chaos is going on around you, as you've finally been seen by the mask. But we'll call today. A bit early. Oh, a bit a early. early. Come a bit on. Early. Come on. But I want to go around and do a few ah. other things. Ah. No. So, we'll go around. <laughs> Let me know what your favorite moment of today's session was. And let me know who you are and where we can find you. We'll start with Delilah. Oh! You can't just do this to us! Yeah, I'm on time. Okay. Okay, 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 okay. Cool, 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 cool. I'm, I'm fine. Okay. Um, right, favorite moment of session. Uh, probably, um... Ooh. I really like the moment between Miss Fairchild and Miss Tilly when they were like, Is this how you see me? Yeah, is this how you see me? A posh, posh, boring person, and the other person's just like, yes, yeah, pretending to be, you know, was, that, was, that was brilliant. Oh, and like sulky Magdalena in, in, in the bushes, like a really like solid cat that was, that was beautiful. I could just kind of imagine like the, the grumpy cat face. And just, uh, that was good. Um, I could go on, but I need to save some for Greybeard. I've now learned. Uh, I've learned my lesson. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> out moments for Greybeard's sake. We really do. Uh, yeah, no, that was those are really great. Um, as usual, thank you. That was cruel, Hollow. Like I, I wish to throttle you. Uh, that was an unfair, <laughs> unfair cliffhanger. <laughs> like, like, is Matt? Is this Fairchild gonna eat us? Is this? It? <laughs> She's gonna turn into a cannibal? Like, what is happening? And um, yeah. Maybe. So, so back to yeah. So that that is. All the different questions. Um, Delilah is not having a good time. This is a terrible, terrible evening. Uh, she just turned 26 as well, so this is awful. Um, and You're as for 26? me, 26. Oh yeah, she um, she she was 25. She turned 26 on Halloween. No one knew because she didn't mention it. But uh, You're such baby. Oh, only your first oh, quarter no. century. Oh, yes, yeah. <laughs> so tiny. I mean, no, she, she has, she's a mother, this is fine. Um, so, you know, um, uh, as for me, I'm like Loria, much younger than Delilah. Uh, please don't call her a baby. That makes me feel bad. Um, I, 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 you can find me as like Loria on Twitter or L Loria Lark on Instagram, but more importantly, you'll not find me anywhere else except Saturdays and here because otherwise I am in Final Fantasy, saving Eorzea, defending the realms and all that. Uh, yeah, and that is me. I am a bit... <sighs> don't eat me, Max Minister of Fairchild. Please don't eat me. Like, that's me that's Are you sitting next to me or is Magdalena sitting next to me? I, don't know. I think you're sitting next to Miss Griffith. <laughs> yeah, but there's someone on the other side. Somebody on the other side. Yeah, I know. Mm -hmm. Maybe it's me. <laughs> Magdalena, speaking of eating people, how you doing? Yes. Well, just so everyone knows, she calls anyone younger than their first century basically a baby. She's like, oh, you 80-year-old person in a wheelchair. Oh, such a baby. Oh, look, so young. Because um, she's just... That's, that's You can do that when you're 450 years old, just about. Um, 
<laughs> uh, so uh, Magdalena didn't get possessed or taken control by whatever that thing was. That was a little, a little frightening for her. She, however, is ecstatic that her papa is finally here. She's waited for so long, at least a good like 40 years since right it was right before dracula the book came out because it kind of spoiled it, it may have been based on a true story and they had to lay low for a while but and then the stupid plague happened she's she's wondering how he got here but she's gonna save it to converse with him afterwards she's got to figure out how to get him to meet the queen whether that means using delilah's people or <laughs> eating slash mind wiping the palace the tonight we'll see what happens um she's Whatever Papa wants, though, Papa needs to get, so... Of course. She has to make this happen. Yeah, if he had bid against something, she was not gonna bid against him. If he had bid on that mask, she was gonna hand all the money to Tilly and be like, I cannot, I can't do it. I cannot defy my Papa's wishes, I can't. Um, so that was super fun. Um, I'm nervous for her because her sword got broken and all these other things and she's not done well. She's... Her, her afflictions, um, her main one is dissolution, which is why she's the forever disappointment child. But he's her first. She's his first child, so she's the favorite. So she has that going for her, at least. Um, but yeah, you can find me online at Laugh Love Lindy. Absolutely adoring this game and the reunion between father and spoiled princess. Um, Laugh Love Lindy, Twitch, Twitter, YouTube. Uh, tonight, actually, and... See, it says five thirty. An hour and a half, approximately, will be our once a month t uh, aliens campaign. Aliens, Blade Runner, mashup universe. Uh, things are getting real intense. So if you want to see a crazy battle and maybe watch the people die, uh, check it out. Cause I play uh, McKeelson, a medic who is really awful and just basically forged all their paperwork. And um, but they've kept people alive so far. <laughs> Super glue, whiskey, and morphine do wonders. That's all you need in a first aid kit. Um, but also check out this Sunday on Hollow's channel for our other Unhallowed Metropolis game. It's coming back from hiatus, and I play a less intelligent but much more sly character. Um, <laughs> who is, I'm very excited to get back to Lilith, so just check that out. Bye. I'm excited to see her as well, and I'm looking forward to that one for sure this I've weekend. I've missed her terribly. Oh, I bet you have. So, speaking of missing terribly, Miss Fairchild. <laughs> How's that corruption uh, looking? <laughs> yeah, I'm watching that poll with my, like, one eye on there. Um, yeah, so, <laughs> hi, I'm Shakespeare. I'm still a little, you know, there's adrenaline everywhere. Um, but you can find me on Twitter and Instagram at Shakesqueer. I am in a um, game on Monday on Hollow's channel. We play pirates. It's very awesome. I'm so excited. I also play on Welcome to the Party on Mondays. We play a Ravnica game where I am a Warforged beat cop. It's very Brooklyn Nine-Nine, but they're actually more insane. Um, and, so, sorry, I'm still so, like, flappy. Um, uh, I also knit things. You can see my knitting on my Twitter, and uh, I have commissions open at the moment. My favorite part, got to leave some for Greybeard. Um, Mickey, <laughs> being high and American. That was magnificent. Just <laughs> in the background. Um, and, and Arthur Murray, that whole exchange was just hilarious. <laughs> Like, uh, um, my sides hurt from the contained laughter of just mm. having basically Lestrade be inept behind us. It was such a wonderful nerdy moment. <laughs> um, so, yeah, I am absolutely terrified and can't wait for next week. This is this is going to be a stop that. I can see you voting. Um, this is going to be quite a, a thing next week. <laughs> no! Don't taunt the chat. They will vote for you. <laughs> that, that's exactly how it works. Okay, just... just Move on, move on before I get myself in more trouble. Oh. We're moving on before you get yourself in more trouble. So speaking of trouble, tell me, how are you doing? Hey, uh, screaming internally. Um, please don't give her corruption. Please don't. She's, she's so broken already. Um, the yes, invoked it. Yeah, I know. I'm provoking him. I'm, I'm sorry. I'm sorry, Miss Fairchild. Uh, favorite moment? One of the favorite moments? Finding out some more about um, the doctor and like 
knowing that he's got shaky morals at best, seeing him get angry at something is really interesting. So, like, props for Greybeard to uh, playing that out. And, yeah, I'm, like, super intrigued. I'll, I'll stop there because leaving stuff for him to actually say. <laughs> uh, you can find me at home on Twitter. I post up random things, whatever I want. And you'll find me on Mondays on Hollow's own channel uh, with this lovely person um, playing uh, the a pirate game based off of the Ghost of Salt Marsh. Not sort anymore, of. it's not. <laughs> not really the Ghost of Salt Marsh. We're just pirates and sometimes very bad people. <laughs> but yeah, thank you very much for playing. And speaking of Greybeard, Greybeard. Hey, Greybeard, Hello. Greybeard Tavern. I have uh... two of your favorite moments, Greybeard. Oh, well, okay. My my least favorite moment was the hanging at the end. That was that was horrible. <laughs> my least favorite was ending early. Uh, I, I, the, the hang was, uh, the best was perfect. The end of a hallowed game is with a hanging at the end. I scrambled for a prop that I'm going to now hold until next time. Um, so come back for next week if you want to see some prop I, I, I walked away and grabbed. Um, and, uh, uh, so there, it was, I, I loved Mickey because, I, I, I just had a conversation with Shakespeare this, uh, today about accents and whatnot. And, and I was absolutely adoring your American. That was, it was beautiful, beautifully done. <laughs> and, and so, so American. Uh, <laughs> um, exactly, exactly. It was great. Uh, I, I am the no, li, uh, laugh, love, Lindy's the other American, right? In the crew here, yeah. I'm, I'm okay. not actually, okay. we'll like you. yes, <laughs> <laughs> and not, not actually. She really I'll is a 400 year old vampire, god dang it. Um, Don't give it away. so, um, <laughs> um, uh. The other thing that I really liked was <laughs> is my other favorite moment because I, I'm such a big fan of your other Hallowed show. Also, mm. um, Matt, uh, <laughs> I thought Lindy was going to say, "I love Lilith. She's so sl and I swear to God, I thought you were going to say slutty. <laughs> I, 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 I mean, like, that's not wrong. It's, it's not. I but thought you were going to say sleazy. Uh, what is it, like an eight or nine in seduction in that game? <laughs> yeah, no, it's so six. It, it's like an eight. That's yeah. what I said. That's a, that, that, I, that cracked me up, uh, but that wasn't actually in, in said game. Uh, no, when you you taunted me with all of the all of the stuff, the, the science and, and some secrets and whatnot, I just, oh, it was beautiful. Beautiful. There's so many times uh, during this game that I'm just like, oh, I'm not worthy. You know, you, you, <laughs> great writing, great stories. It's always Thank a you. good time. Always. And good. yeah, so next next week is going to be our last session of this game. So yeah, I'm looking forward to, I'm not looking forward to, and I'm looking forward to running our last session. So the finale is going to be next week. Uh, it's going to be at the same time as we do usually. We'll be running for the full duration that time is we need to get through a lot of stuff but we're leaving it here for today because there's a lot to get through and i don't want to halfway get into that combat and that entire situation and leave you i'd rather just tease it where it is so <laughs> speaking of that thank you everybody for watching so far it's been an absolute joy tune back in next week for our finale for this season and this game of death's curios um, and as for anything else, if you want some more on Hallowed, come to my channel on Sunday. That's twitch.tv slash hollowtail. Um, and you'll find our other game I've been running, which is Tiny by Gaslight, where they're all trapped in York and we're beginning a brand new season. So if you're new here and you've just caught this season, catch up on Encounter Roleplay's YouTube channel. But also if you want to see something new live, come back to my channel on Sunday. We'll treat you to some unhallowed fun there in a very relaxed way. And aside from that, you can find me on YouTube at youtube.com slash hollowtail, where I do various tabletop RPG videos, and also on Sunday, a massive project I've been working on that I've been putting a lot of love and effort and How did I forget into that one? Ah! Is releasing this <laughs> Sunday. Um, Laugh Love Lindy is in it. It's a big audio drama RPG project that I've been putting together and sinking a lot of blood, sweat, and tears into, so I'm looking forward to releasing that to everybody. So come and tune in for that. Come and check it out. But aside from that, You've all been brilliant. 
thank you so much for coming and for watching this game. And I'm going to leave everybody on screen this time when I reveal who has won the corruption oh with an absolute landslide. <laughs> Miss Fairchild. Why, Miss Fairchild? Why? <laughs> Yay! That's going to be fun. I'm going to need to get some. Are you at five? <laughs> are you going to disappear? Yeah. What corruption are you on? Um, uh, I, I will, I, I was at four. Say so you're at five. No, I'm at five now, yeah. Oh my god, you're gonna just eat me. Appropriate. No. Are you gonna just- There's someone on my other side, it'll be a coin flip. Oh god. <laughs> Magdalena's that worried you're gonna stab her, so it's probably not her. <laughs> you're very good at it. Might have to see on that one, that's for sure. But just, just <laughs> yeah. at home, we will read out what your new corruption does for you with ravenous- <gasps> Yeah. Do you want me to read it out? I've got it here. Tell you what, give it, give it a read. Okay. Just oh, before rating... we sign off. So, rating five. Your hungers have grown perverse and inhuman. You can no longer gain nourishment from anything but raw human flesh and blood. Likely, you have become a regular visitor to the underground meat markets of the metropolis. The character must feed upon human flesh and blood, or he will starve. If the character does not eat daily, he suffers the penalties that I've already got! Sorry. <laughs> After, and then, yeah. Ah! After the second day without his peculiar meal, the character must make a will roll each subsequent day until the roll is failed or a meal is secured. If he succeeds, he manages to control himself for another day. If he fails, he must seek out nourishment, even if it means committing murder. And Whoa. before we leave tonight, let's just say. So what I'm feeling is some tag team lunch. Oh. We're gonna welcome to the <laughs> no. club. As the mask, the tortured heart, makes you indulge in your darkest of desires. And with that, I'm gonna sign off for tonight. So thank you so much, everybody, for coming and watching. Thank you for being relaxing with us and coming through this horrific game that we're going to continue playing for at least one more week for you. Come back for the finale next week. We've got some surprises in store for you and you can see what happens with your vote on Miss Fairchild's corruption, which is going to be interesting for sure. But yeah, until next time, be you be brilliant. Beware what goes bump in the dark. It's probably Miss Fairchild. And we'll see yeah. you next. Bye-bye. <laughs> Oh my god!